Hey guys, Pro1701 here, and today I'm going to be talking about Doctor Who the Collection, the classic Doctor Who range, and I'm going to be predicting how I think the rest of the sets are going to release. We have 12, possibly 13 sets left to go, <coughs> being at just over halfway through the range, and I'm going to talk about my thoughts on them, and I'm going to be uh, trying to use as much logic as I can when assigning them, because we know some are more problematic than others. We know some aren't coming soon. Others, we're pretty sure, are coming soon. I will be taking that into account, uh, especially the issues with an unearthly child. Uh, and I'm going off the assumption we're only going to get two a year from now on, because I do think that's going to be the case. I think from here on out, we will only get two a year. So I, I will be predicting that we'll only get two a year. So for 2024, I am predicting we'll get a Tom Baker season, uh, probably season 15. I think there's an outside chance it could be 13. I've said this before. I'm calling it now. Uh, the swatch lead binding posted to kind of tease the next box set, the colors of the box set, that kind of cream, beige, tan, brownish colors where it shifted uh, would fit season 13 very well. And I agree with most people that it would make sense for them to save 13 for Tom's last, but I could see them doing it sooner. So I think there's an outside chance it'll be 13. I will say I think it's going to be 15. That that color swatch to me also matches 15 a lot. Kind of reminds me of the color of the Fendal a little, uh, or uh, Leela's outfit a little. And there's something else too that I'm forgetting off the top of my head. But I think it'll be season 15. I also think we will get a Troughton this year. We know Fraser Hines has said he is recorded behind the sofa for the Mind Robber. So they're actively working on season six. We need a Troughton on the shelf. We know we're not going to get a Hartnell anytime soon. Um, and it makes sense to go ahead and get a Troughton. Just to have a Troughton season six makes the most sense. And again, we know they're working on it. So that's what I think we're going to get for 2024. A Tom Baker, probably 15, maybe 13, and I think season six for Troughton. That's how I'm calling 2024, and I'm so looking forward to that Troughton. 2025, I think we will get season 25. We'll be due an 80 set. It makes sense to give us season 25 in 2025. We'll definitely be doing another McCoy by that point. Um, and being a shorter season, I'm assuming it's easier to do, especially since it was all shot on videotape. There is no uh, film elements, I think, really used for season 25. They had switched completely to outdoor video by then. So I'm very confident season 25 will be in 2025. And then at that point, we'll be doing another Pertwee. I think we get season 11. I suspect season 11 over season 7. Uh, season 7 needs so much restoration work, whereas season 11 really, aside from the normal blue stuff they do for the blu-ray releases really just needs episode one of dinos fixed granted that is the most problematic episode of pert we are to fix but they've had a lot of time to work on it i'm sure they've got it looking good by now uh i'm hoping dinos will have some updated effects or planet of spiders will have some updated effects but i think it'll have been two years since season nine at that point i think we'll get um Season 11 in 2025. So for 2025, I think season 25 and season 11. For 2026, again, at this point, we'd be doing another Tom. I think they'll do 13 before 16. I don't know why. It makes sense for them to start Tom with 12, end Tom with 13, go out, you know, book in both of them with his best seasons. I get that. For some reason, I could see them leaving the key to time for last since it is a serialized story arc i could see them going out on that i'm going to call 13 in 2026 as the next one it'll have been a long time since we had a hinchcliffe season at that point the second one of the season i'm going to say will either be one or five depending on the situation with an unearthly child a lot of this is tied up with what's going on with the rights to an unearthly child which most suvians know about at this point um <clears throat> if they've got the rights sorted to an unearthly child, I think they will put out season one. We will be due a Hartnell by then. Because uh, we know at this point, Peter Crocker hadn't even started working on season one. He mentioned two or three months ago. Part of that probably due to the stuff with an unearthly child. He's probably been working on other seasons. 
If they've got that sorted, I can see them doing that. If not, because there's no way we're getting season three anytime soon. If not, I think we could get season five because season five is mostly ready to go. All we need is Wheel in Space. They have plenty of time to release Wheel in Space as an animation between now and the end of 2026 and have time for it to get its sales back. They could release it this year. They could release it next year and it would have time to make its money. So I think season one or five in 2026 with season 13. For 2027, I think we get season 21, which will, of course, be the final season of 80s classic Who, which will be a good way to go out. It's got Caves of Androzani, uh, Resurrection of the Daleks. Um, I think there's one more good one in there. Frontios is really good. Hopefully, uh, Resurrection of the Daleks will have the updated effects it desperately needs to live up to the story. Uh, and then not only will that complete the fifth Doctor Era, but at, that will technically also complete the sixth Doctor Era because we will get Twin Dilemma. Yay. Um, and then we'll have all of 80s who complete. And then I also think we'll get season seven at that point. Again, we will. it'll have been two years since season 11. We'll be doing another Pertwee. Uh, season seven, by that point, they'll probably have it ready to go. I mean, Inferno probably doesn't need a whole lot of cleanup. Of course, Spearhead looks phenomenal as is. Um, that's given them plenty of time to work on Silurians and Ambassadors of Death and get them into shape and hopefully uh, do some good extras for them. I know it's really hard because so many, I don't know how many people from that era, from season seven are left because of course Joe's not in season seven. Liz was in season seven uh, and Carolyn John has passed. And of course, John Pertwee has passed and Terrence and Barry are gone. Although we have archive interviews with them that they could do stuff with, I'm sure. Uh, same thing with Derek Sherwin. Uh, really, I don't know who you have left besides uh, John Levine for that era. I mean, you could still have Katie there because that's still kind of her, some of her era, even though she's not in that season. But I think John might be the only one really still standing um, from that era. I don't know if any, no, none of the writers, all of the writers are gone. So I don't really know what they could do there um, for new for new behind the scenes stuff, and I don't really think any of the stories need updated effects either. I don't think Spearhead needs them. Silurians, maybe Ambassadors of Death. Okay, you could do some updated effects for Ambassadors of Death, and I don't think Inferno needs them. It stands on its own well, but I think I think that's when we get Inferno. So 2027, season 21, season seven. 2028, I think we get season 16. We would be do, do another Tom at this point. Um, season 16 would be a good way to finish off his era since it is a serialized arc. And I do love some of the stories in it. Ryboss Operations, the, the Ryboss Operation and Pirate Planet are phenomenal stories in my opinion. I love them. Stones of Blood is good. Androids of Tara is, it depends on my viewing. Sometimes I like it more than others. Of course, y'all know how I feel about Kroll. And then I find the Armageddon Factor very underrated. I actually enjoy it. Is it a bit padded? Yes, but I still like it. I, I would be fine with them ending on an epic adventure like that, especially if they wanted to do a sequel to The Key to Time, kind of in modern Who. That would be a great way to uh, tease it, release you know season 16 and have that lead into whatever they're doing with it in the modern show. That would be interesting. And then I also think... We'll get season one or five. Whichever one we didn't get before, I think we'll get then. Again, if season one is ready to go, I don't know how long the rights on an unearthly child are going to drag out or if they would just hit a point when they released the box set without it. I mean, I know that's hard to fathom, but I don't know what they would do at that point. So I think at that point, considering what's left, you get um, either one or five, whichever one you didn't get before, probably one at the rate that stuff's going on that. For 2029, I think you get season four. I, they have plenty of time to finish the animations by then. All you got to do is animate Smugglers and Highlanders, and it's good to go, I think. And it's only 10 episodes of it they have to remaster, 10 surviving episodes. I think we get season four. I could possibly see it coming sooner. But I think we get season four if we haven't gotten it by then. And then I think we get a Wilderness Years box set. I do think... Uh, they go ahead and release a Wilderness Years box set. Granted, I could also see them doing that in 2026 just because that will be the 30th anniversary of the TV movie. But I think we'll get it more around now uh, because I'm sure 
<clears throat> I'm sure it's going to cost them a lot of money to do the wilderness year set because so much stuff is owned by so many different people. But I think if we get it, we get it here toward the end in 2029. And then in 2030, we get the season three box set. Because season three is in the roughest shape. Let's not kid ourselves. Um, it has 10 stories, the longest, the most of any classic Doctor Who season. Um, 10 stories, uh, 45 episodes, I believe. Uh, only three of the stories are complete. And several of those are completely missed. Several of the ones that are missing are completely missing and in rough shape. Uh, of course, Galaxy 4 has been animated. Celestial Toy Maker will have been animated by then. And we do have the college remake of Mission to the Unknown and even the unofficial animation of that. I don't know what they'll want to do, if, if either of those will be acceptable for them or not. But we still have like four or five other stories that have to be animated <coughs> or something done with. Uh, the Massacre is in rough shape. Uh, the Savages, I think the Telesnap Recon's better. I think um, John Wiles was gone by then. I've never watched the recon of it. Dallas Master Plan needs something done with it because only three episodes survive. And then the Myth Makers is in rough shape. So they need to do something with those. I think season three will be the last season released in the collection range just because of the shape it's in. It really needs some animations done for it. So that's my thoughts on that. Real quick, going back over it. This year, seasons 15 and season six. 2023, seasons 25 and 11. 2020, excuse me, 2025, seasons 25 and 11. Season, uh, 2026, seasons 13, and either one or five, depending on the stuff with an unearthly child, probably five. 2027, season 21 and season seven. 2028, season 16, and either one or five, probably one. Hopefully they've gotten everything resolved by then. Um... 2029, Season 4 in Wilderness Years, and 2030, Season 3. I want to know what you think of my selection and my reasoning, and <coughs> I want to know what you think of my selection and my reasoning. Also, I want to know how you would predict the rest of the range coming out. Comment down below and let me know. Don't forget to click the like button and the subscribe button and the bell for notifications as well. I want to give a shout out to some of my top tier patrons, Stephen Crane, Colin Coney, and Finn Perkins. I appreciate their support, as I do the support of all of my patrons. It does make a difference. If you would like to support me on my Patreon, there's a link to that down in the description below. YouTube memberships are also available. My P.O. box is down there as well, as is a link to my Amazon wish list. Most importantly, thank you for watching.